let's start up. Do you have time or, or yes? Dad was born 1868, official 1870. Why? Grandma wanted to defer for two years the draft. All the parents cheated mm. trying to avoid the draft. He, he was drafted. 1870, okay. He's in a real rural town in what is now Romania, and he walks past the blacksmith shop and falls in love with Smithy. So he went through the apprenticeship there, journeyman, and he had sitting on both shoulders a patron saint. Because look, my grandfather was a rabbi. My father was one of nine sons. In those days, the guilds frowned and would not let a Jew in. It wasn't done. No Jews. How the hell did Dad manage to work his way in? I don't know. With my grandfather, you a disgrace to the family. You know, you're supposed to be a, a, a scholar. No, I want to be a blacksmith. So my father had two angels on his shoulders pushing me. He knew he had goals, and one of the goals was to be a master. And over there, he had to qualify. So he went to Vienna, worked in Vienna for three years, and went to school in Vienna. And I, I can't bring up the name, it doesn't matter. Um, the school was a craft trade school at the level where you had to qualify for masters. That was the training for journeymen, okay? Herr Professor, Mr. Professor Camilo Sitte was the director of the school. I was told he was a world, and I was verified, that he was a world famous city planner. But, in addition to that, he taught art history, design, drawing, structure, ornament. And the way he illustrated his talk was having an amphitheater room with blackboards, elevated blackboard, and Dad explained that he would chalk talk. He would draw and talk, and the custodian would be behind him with a bucket and a sponge and wash it. So Professor Zita would go here, the custodian went there, and by the time he got back here, the blackboard was dry, back and forth. When the beams were up there, they were naked, and he didn't like it. And Paul Fehir, the Hungarian designer he brought from Paris, was a genius. And he said, you know, Paul, I'd like to show the history of our trade. And if you look up there, you'll see from primitive man up to our quality. And I didn't know, and I'm ashamed of this, until a prophet reserve had a, a course in art history graduate student here looking at this who did research that Paul Fehr has historically accurate renderings of Egyptian poses, Egyptian columns, Greek Middle Age hammers. He did things accurately, okay? They are almost pictured uh, like a textbook. So this is Dad's tribute and memorial to a teacher whom he respected so much. When Dad was finished with the course, he went back to Budapest. He worked for the imperial shop there that was, you know, able to deliver to the king for a couple, three years. And what, what Dad was most proud of was the owner of that shop sponsored my father for his independence to hang out his shingle. He wasn't afraid of the competition. Mm -hmm. And you see the photograph on the table? All right. That's the climate that I was born into. We, we don't have that here. Where do we find it? No. Mm -hmm. I will share something with you, which is ultimately going to happen. I'm not going to live forever. I don't have any opportunities to talk to kindred spirits, mm. whom I admire as when much. Passion is exciting. As, as I admire you guys. And, you know, we've not, Kim's known me from my first trip to Havana. <laughs> 
But if we could get some young people, great.